Well, there's a garden on the grounds of Peninsula Regional Medical Center that honors a young man who spent countless hours volunteering his time and love to the hospital, David Larimore, a man who against all odds lived long enough to touch thousands of people. There is nothing that will force you to plan ahead more than finding out that you're going to be a parent. You dream of what your child is going to do with their life. You might even start socking away some money for their education. That certainly was the case for Sheldon and Sarah Bell Larmore. It was nearly 44 years ago they found out they were going to be parents for the first time. But all the planning in the world probably wouldn't have prepared them for the future their son's life held for them. Sarah had a perfect pregnancy. She never was sick. She didn't take aspirins. She didn't do any of the things that she thought might be harmful to David. Like most couples, Sheldon and Sarah Bell Larmore were joyous the day their son was born. But when the doctor told them David had spina bifida, they couldn't believe the next words that came out of his mouth. We were told not to bind with him at all. We were told to institutionalize him. We were also told by one of the physicians or one of the pediatricians uh, to expect nothing and appreciate anything. Words the couple refused to accept. We had been waiting for David and David came along and kind of made our, our family a whole. Uh, and we just knew that we were a part of one of God's miracles and we were very pleased that David, that God saw fit to give us David. So we realized that we had to change our, li our life and we were going to do all we possibly could to nurture him, to raise him, and to help him do as much as he could. I just was very happy that he was there and, and I really thought that perhaps Oh, in a week or so, you know, we'll take him home and everything will be fine. But it was far more than a few weeks. It was almost two months before David actually came home. And despite David's chronic condition, Sheldon and Sarah Bell knew that their family was perfect. I never saw the, the negative side of how sick he really was. And if you look back on his pictures now, when he was just an infant, you could tell that, that he was really, really sick. But we, I didn't think that. I didn't know that. I just thought he was ours. He was perfect. And though he spent much of his life in and out of the hospital, David's positive attitude always prevailed. The longer he was with us, the fuller, if that's the right word, the fuller our life became with love, you know, and patience, oh, patience, <laughs> and, and our faith grew. We never, I got to emphasize that again, and we never once questioned why us? We were so happy to have David because David was such a joy. Although his speech wasn't always clear, his purpose here was. When we are a man um, talking to um, patients. In fact, WBOC featured David in a story 16 years ago for the thousands of hours of time he spent at PRMC volunteering. He really loved the hospital. You know, he, he loved being at the hospital, but he didn't love being in the hospital. David was an avid sports fan. He volunteered his time to help others with disabilities. But David's life was also filled with surgeries, hospital stays, and treatments. Living with David was like living with a time bomb. So we always had that in the back part of our mind that something was going to happen at some point. Sheldon and Sarah Bell say as David got older, he knew his time on earth was almost over. Bouts of pneumonia made him weaker. They say his all enduring faith in God gave him peace. He would say, please let me go. Mom and Dad, I love you very much, but you know, I'm weak, I'm tired. I'm tired of fighting. I know where I'm going, and please just let me go. And of course, they were, <laughs> we would look at him and say, you're not going anywhere yet. But David eventually let go in May of 2002. David went the way he wanted to go. Three hours before he died, 
he was receiving an award from the city, from the mayor. That night, David spoke his last words to his mother and father. He was trying to get his hospital bed up as high as he could get it, which is unusual because he couldn't reach it in time before, but this one particular night he was able to reach the control. He was trying to get it high, as high as he could get it, and Sibar came in and said, David, are you trying to get to heaven? He said, yes, Mom. And she said, come on back down here because you're not going tonight. Any kind of act. She walked out in the kitchen and came back. And David was alone. Sheldon has written a book about David's life. It's called Be Quiet and Listen. It serves to not only tell David's story, but to show other people how God can work miracles as he did for David. He had total faith and trust in God. He never saw himself as being in a handicap. He always wanted to do for other people. He just really was at peace with himself, um, and he just wanted to be home with his Father in Heaven. And he left. He left happy. As for Sheldon and Sarah Bell, they carry on day to day as David requested, but they know he's always there. It's, it's like he's changed addresses. He's, his address isn't here anymore. His address is in heaven, but he still is ours. Making David Larmor a Delmarva treasure here on earth and in heaven. Amazing. Now, talking with Sheldon and Sarah Bell, there are so many amazing little stories within the larger story. But of course, it's all in the book, Be Quiet and Listen. All proceeds from the book go to the David Larmore Memorial Fund set up through the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore of Maryland for use in purchasing supplies, equipment, respite care, ramps, canes, all kinds of stuff for those who can't afford the cost of obtaining them. Wow. Incredible. David, an incredible young man, and, and everything that his parents put into him too yeah. so them just as well inspirational great story thank you thank you great story and if you would like to learn more about the david larmore memorial fund or to find out where you can buy the book go to our website delmarvalife.com so still ahead on delmarva life did tossing and turning keep you up last night you may want to consider visiting a sleep lab to determine if you have a sleep disorder up next we're going to get an in-studio demonstration to learn how sleep labs work and take a wild guess who gets to be the test subject. It's not me. Yeah. And later we're in the kitchen with finger food that can double up as a delicious meal. Tell Marva Life. We'll be right back.